Hi. In this whiteboard session, I'm going to talk about a tax planning technique called the estate freeze. This is going to be of particular interest to those of you who have incorporated businesses or who hold your investments in personal holding corporations. For those of you who have unincorporated businesses or hold significant investments that are unregistered and not in holding corporations, you may still be able to take advantage of an estate freeze. There's just first going to be an initial step of transferring that business or those investments into a corporation. So what is an estate freeze? An estate freeze is where the shareholder of a corporation that we'll call the freezer decides to limit or stop their, growth, their participation in the growth and profits of a corporation. And that freezer wants to allow others, typically family members of the freezer, to be the ones who participate in that future growth and profits of the corporation. Here are three common examples where a freezer may decide to do an estate freeze. The first is if the corporation is growing or will grow to a value well beyond the needs of the freezer. And the freezer has decided that whether during the freezer's life or at the freezer's death, he would like the freezer's family to be able to be the ones to take advantage of that growth and profit. A second example is if the freezer is bringing in a family member to assist in the business of the corporation. The thinking here is, if that family member is helping grow the business, then that family member should also be entitled to the growths and profits of that business. This would commonly come up if a parent is bringing in a child to a family-owned business. A third example I'll give you is if the freezer has low-income family members or family members without income. And the freezer is going to use the profits and growth of the corporation to help support that individual. This commonly comes up if the freezer has children who are attending university. So now that you know those three examples of when a freezer may conduct an estate freeze, the question becomes, well, why doesn't the freezer just maintain his interest in the corporation and just give that family member cash or give that family member an asset whenever they need? Well, the answer is an estate freeze gives family members a more direct interest in the corporation, and this allows for certain tax efficiencies. For one, there's income splitting, which allows for the low marginal tax brackets that may be afforded to some of the family members to be taken advantage of. There's also the reduction of tax that will happen on the death of the freezer because the freezer's interest in the corporation has been limited in value. And third, there's the potential to multiply the $750,000 capital gains exemption that may be available on the sale of certain corporations carrying on an active business. Now that's the basic of an, basics of an estate freeze. There are some other considerations such as where should voting control lie after an estate freeze is implemented and how should the new interests of the family members be held. Should they own shares directly in the corporation? Should there be a holding corporation that owns those shares? Or should a trust be put in place? But for now I think I'm just going to leave it at that and this one other very important comment about estate freeze. The profits and growth of a corporation have certain tax advantages once you implement an estate freeze. But those advantages are only applicable to profits and growth that accrue after the estate freeze. So it's very important to act sooner rather than later. If you have any questions or if you think an estate freeze might be good for you, feel free to give me a call.